Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our third series of Ask the Design Professionals. My name is Michelle Ganella from Refeather Your Nest, and um, I'm speaking to you from New Jersey, and I have um, with me today. Hi, I'm Karen Casella. I'm also located in New Jersey. And I'm Susan Hayes, and I'm in the Florida office. So thanks for joining us again. And um, again, just be sure to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna be answering questions for the next um, uh, few weeks um, or however long um, you guys continue to ask. We'll continue to do these series. Um, don't forget to post pictures with your questions if you can. Yes. Make yes. it easier. Absolutely. So today's series, we're gonna talk about um, the, the overall theme is uh, latest trends. So the question that I received that I'm going to be answering is, how do you incorporate taxidermy into everyday spaces? Mm. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so um, excluding the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of how to incorporate taxidermy into your room is, um, you know, if you have a man cave or a log cabin or a beach house of some sort where you can put a fish or something like that in up on the wall, those are kind of common ways to do it. But I'm, I'm going to try to show you some things that are a little bit outside the box. Um, and hopefully you'll like them. Actually, some of them are really cool, which I really enjoyed, which was a little surprising. But this is, this is what's fun about um, working on projects with clients because it's really about you guys and what you want to have in your home, not about what we would put in our home. But um, that's, that's why every client is a new challenge and it's a new way of thinking. So, um, so it's really interesting. We love our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so I'm going to share my screen with you um, because um, I picked up some pictures from Pinterest and um, it's, um, let's see, here we go. Ooh. So this first picture is a picture of um, taxidermy on a gallery wall. And it looks and works in the space wonderfully because there's nothing competing with the taxidermy on the wall. And the gallery um, photos are very subtle um, and they're all uniform. So again, it's, there's no competition there. And the colors of the room kind of all work with one another. So you have that neutral background, the pictures on the gallery wall are black and they kind of have that splash of color. Um, and then there's brown accents all over, which is the taxidermy. So it works. And then you also have your area rug. So the feeling um, is, is one that's shared throughout the theme of this space. Um, and the taxidermy works because of that. Like you have the, the um, um, the throw the animal uh, hide on the floor, which kind of, again, animal related. Um, so it works there. Um, the next one is a, um, an eclectic space, which um, you have um, the taxidermy that's on the wall. And again, colors are, that brown is um, placed sporadically through the room. Um, it has a rust rustic vibe in it because of the cocktail table, but the bohemian feel of the chandelier. And then you have a traditional look on the sofa. So here's an eclectic space that um, is not a man cave feel. It is not like a seashore looking home or, uh, you know, down the shore or anything like that. It's definitely a, a, a living room space that, um, you know, is, is more on the traditional. Well, it's, it's, a, it's eclectic. I already said that. So, and it works, you know, the colors work together. Um, and then um, the next one is this, this is actually um, really interesting. This is more of a current trend in taxidermy. Um, this is a faux taxidermy. And I, when I started researching this to answer this question, I thought it was super um, cool. Um, the next couple of photos, you can, I, I'm sure a lot of people would be willing to um, introduce this into their spaces. So you have the, um, um, the um, shiplap on the wall, uh, which could be real or it could be faux also. It could be a wallpaper, which again is another current trend. Um, and then you have the black um, faux taxidermy on the wall. Um, and then the throws that are all over the room. So the texture is really interesting in here. You have a variety of different textures and different colors, um, but they all work together because um, the feel of the room is, is uh, pull, it pulls together and it doesn't, 
feel like a like a man cave. Um, this could be a um, a couple's bedroom also. Um, this is really one of the more interesting pictures. This is again a faux gallery wall of all taxidermy, but to me it doesn't look or feel um, too masculine because of the um, metallic um, golds and the silvers and then you have the matte black that's going on against the backdrop, which is a neutral color. So, um, and then the shape of the way the taxidermy was placed on the wall is also something that is really interesting. So, um, so you know, that's, um, that's something else to consider. Switching over to the other type is, um, we're gonna look at some fish ideas. So here's a picture of a traditional space um, that um, has uh, a white background again. Um, if this was like a blue sailfish on this wall, I would not be, sh this would not be a good example because um, that would be screaming at you. And that's not something that I don't think everybody would want in their space, but this works because it's subtle and it goes with the coloring on the wall and it doesn't, and, and, and it's, you know, interesting and different. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that if you walked into a home and saw that, it would be something you would talk about all the time. Like, oh, you know, did you, catch that fish or whatever. <laughs> Great feature wall there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then lastly is a picture of, um, I'm gonna guess that this was a shore home only because of the um, accessory details that are spattered throughout. Um, but the fish that are on the wall here are all done in like a metallic silver look. And again, notice that the color is, um, the color of the taxidermy is, very subtle against the background. So it's not screaming at you. And again, it works. So you have the different textures going on here as well. The area rug, the, the grass cloth on the, um, on the side of the stairway. Um, and, um, and it just, you know, it, it works and it's not overwhelming. But again, another statement piece, if you're walking into a home, that may be something that people may talk about as they're, um, as they're entering your home. So, um, so those are some here in this space makes it so beautiful because although all the colors are subdued, you have the sheen of the metallic silver fish and then the different fabrics on the sate and the foyer and that rug and the grass cloth. It's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so again, like I said, to begin with, I was pretty surprised at, um, all of the different, um, um, examples that I, I came up with. Because um, before doing this, again, it's not about me, it's about you, but I don't know if I would incorporate that in my a taxidermy in my home. But now, seeing the faux ones and how you can do the, the metallic, and um, I, would, I, would, I would definitely do something like that. So, um, so I hope you found that educational and interesting. Um, and um, let's go to Karen. Um, so my... The question I have was, does trim have to be white? Like, so, no, I'm sorry, not does trim have to be white. What color should you paint your trim versus your wall color? So the first point of that would be most people do choose a white trim. And reason being is because white goes with everything. It seems to complement most every colors. It's clean and crisp looking and, and really, um, it always looks beautiful. White, a white clean trim always looks beautiful. Um, but however, you really do have to be careful how you choose a trim. You have to pay attention to the temperature of your colors that you're using. So blues tend to have gray undertones, gray walls or gray undertones. But if you're using golden colors that will have a warmer temperature and a yellow undertone. So you wanna make sure you coordinate the undertone of your trim color with the undertone of your wall paint color. So if you're, I will share some examples with you. Hold on. So for instance, here's two different rooms. We have crisp white trim in both rooms. On the left side where you're just seeing mostly the door, it seems like it's a little bit warmer of a grayy paint color. So you can actually do uh, a trim color with a yellow undertone or maybe a gray undertone. But the right side with the navy blue, I would probably recommend doing um, a white trim color with an undertone that has a gray in it. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you pay attention. It's, it's actually, 
it's paint color is never as easy as you think it's going to be until you get your hands on and you start putting colors in uh, different lighting and whatnot. Um, the next thing I wanted to address was, did you just want to say something, Michelle? Oh, no, I was just gonna, I was just gonna add that um, absolutely, like um, you can look at a million different color wipes because there's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, but you, you know, when you look at them, putting them up against a plain white piece of paper, you'd be surprised, right, Karen, like how, you know, one will have a yellow undertone or one will have a cooler grayer undertone, like, or a blue undertone. They, they really, um, it really morphs into other things. And I, took, I, took a course, I took a course called White is Complicated. Mm. Yes, yes. That sums so it up. Kind of pick the color in the room that you're going to be in and check it out during, throughout the day to see how the natural light in that room affects those colors, whether it's a wall or trim color you're choosing. Mm. Yep. Um, so do you have to use white always? Absolutely not. You can create a little bit of an edgier, updated, trendy look by using um, a black. So in this picture I'm sharing, these two pictures, they chose black moldings and they just work really well. On the left side, you probably have like, looks like an old kind of um, uh, a brownstone or something in, in Hoboken or New York City. And they highlighted the molding just so beautifully by using the black paint. Um, and they brought different black elements into that room as well. And on the right, in the right picture, they actually brought the black up to the ceiling against those white crisp walls. Uh, and that's actually more of a rustically looking space, which totally works. It's, it, it just brings a different edge. It, it makes it pop and it, it gives it a little bit more interest. These two spaces here is more of a monochromatic look, which I also love. To me, monochromatic is so soothing. So in the picture of the doorways, they did like a off-white kind of a grayish tinge wall, and they just chose to take that color to the next level and put a darker gray trim uh, on the molding, which looks fantastic. It's almost as if you have, if you take your color wheel and you start with the top and you choose colors within that. So you choose two colors within that strip and that's just how you would create a monochromatic look. And the picture to the right, it looks like the trim might be slightly darker in that case and they, they kept the ceiling white in order to just keep the light in the room bouncing and reflecting to, so not to make it so dark. So that works as well. Here's another space that has uh, the same color trim as the uh, walls, which is- I love, I love that color. I love it. Yeah. The color itself is beautiful. I know that's your favorite color, Michelle. <laughs> um, you can see by the picture behind Michelle's head. <laughs> but it just, um, that tends to be a very smoothing, um, a soothing look as well, because your, your eye is continuing around the room effortlessly because it doesn't have the white trim to stop your eye. So that's another interesting look. Great, Karen, great, you, great, you great thing. Out? Sorry. What's that, Michelle? Great thing for like a master bedroom, very soothing. Yeah, Susan? Can you point out the, the backs of the doors were painted the color of the room? Um, but a lot of people get confused about what do you do at the front of the door. And um, you can paint the front of the door, the, uh, you know, what the color of the doors are throughout. It could be white on the front, but um, the back, it doesn't mean because you painted the back that you have to take it out to the hallway. Right. It works the same as like with a front door. Sometimes most of the front doors of the house, the exterior door, if it's, if it's painted and not a wood door, the exterior is going to be painted a different color than the interior. And that's totally, yeah. totally great. Um, this is another example of a monochromatic, very light walls. They chose a very soothing palette here. Um, and the trim is not a oh, crisp white. They actually chose the same ceiling color. You could barely see the ceiling, but they, they just played it up a little bit. And again, it's just an edgier look. Um, it's just a, and it's, it's a little daring and it's nice to see something a little different than the, than the standard white that we always see. This is another pretty extreme example um, of just the play on colors. You're pretty much using the same, again, with the color wheel and just choosing two colors. And then uh, some people asked about wood trim. Wood trim is very appropriate in many spaces. Sometimes it could look dark or dingy, but it, uh, in this picture you could see it's an old craftsman style home 
and wood trim is just so appropriate here. It keeps the integrity of the house. So it really depends on where you live um, and what look you're trying to aspire. Um, these next two examples, which are my last examples, show a rustic look and just keeping the wood trim. So the left side is more of a contemporary rustic, whereas the right side is a little bit more traditional rustic. You can also keep wood trim if you wanted to. Um, so there's many different options. You just have to be careful and, and know what look you're going for and, um, and play with it a little bit and have fun. Um, another thing, you don't have to keep your trim the same color throughout the entire home. I would suggest keeping the trim color the same in a common area. Like if you look over Susan's head, you will see that um, she has a dark trim, which is absolutely gorgeous because it, it coordinates with the pieces of furniture she has. But maybe in bedrooms, you'll do white trim um, or you'll, cho you'll choose a nursery to do a light pink wall and a darker pink trim. You know, you can play around and, and really have a good time with it. It doesn't always have to be white. And just make sure you choose semi-gloss when you're choosing your trim color. Um, or, or high gloss, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's what I have on trim. Mm -hmm. Great. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. So my question this week is how do you repurpose old items in your home to make them more up-to-date with today's trends? And um, this is an exciting topic for me because um, I, a lot of you know that I moved 12 times in 15 years very early on in my marriage and um, when we first started having children. We were right. all over the country. So that's how Refeather Your Nest started because I had to know how to take what was old every move and make it look updated and new in the new home. So, um, so I'm very excited to talk about that today. And um, that's how we got our tagline, Renew, Refresh, Refeather Your Nest. So let's talk about renewing and refreshing to make these old items look new. Uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is paint. Uh, we, we talk about it for walls, but it can also make old things look brand new. Um, we can talk, we can add new, fresh paint to cabinetry, we can add it to furniture, we can add it to uh, even lighting fixtures. Uh, you, there, you can do so much with paints. There's so many different paints out there now. Uh, think about a kitchen that you want to remodel. And you might not be in your um, in, in this home, um, as I experienced, uh, for very long. So you don't want to go in and redo the whole kitchen and not be able to enjoy it. So one of the great options is painting the cabinets. You can paint, if you're, if you're nervous, keep the cabinets one color. And if you have a kitchen island, start there. Maybe your cabinets are uh, dark um, or white. Say they're white. They, you can, um, paint your kitchen island a beautiful gray color or a navy blue. Um, how, how much would that make an impact on, on your space, on making it look fresh and new? And people that um, have not seen your uh, home yet that maybe live in the neighborhood would come in and go, oh, did you do redo the kitchen? You know, paint is a wonderful uh, option for taking old things and making them new. For lighting, you can take a brass chandelier. Um, the shiny brass is really, they're um, golds and muted golds um, and um, what they call um, weathered brass. They're all making a comeback. Uh, but the, the shiny traditional brass, those um, very heavy, um, actually solid brass chandeliers, um, tend to look dated. You could take one of those and you could actually spray paint it. And, um, and not only change the color tone, um, maybe you change it to a brushed nickel, a, a metallic, another metallic. Uh, you could change it to a copper. You could also, though, um, you know, paint it the new um, trend that's going the blacks again uh, black is very popular right now uh, We saw the beautiful picture in the trims on just popping the trim with black pop your lighting with some black It, it would look exquisite uh, But you could also change the style of the bulbs instead of the Candelabra bulbs that we see all the time. You can change it out to the new Edison bulbs that are out there um, an industrial look um, you know, you paint your sh chandelier, your simple chandelier black, and you add the, in, um, the Edison bulbs, and it looks industrial. Maybe you change your um, 
bulbs out in a fixture that you just bought to round bulbs. Or um, you bought the fixture a while back and it has the traditional candelabra and you change them to round bulbs. Um, it, it'll change the fixture in an instant and you didn't spend a lot of money. So paint can do wonders. Um, changing hardware right, on cabinetry, on um, dressers, furniture, that can, that can make a, a old piece feel new. Uh, so I would uh, look into finding some hardware that you like. Uh, I was mentioning um, to someone earlier about going to home goods, but unfortunately right now we can't go to home goods. So, um, you know, a place to uh, look online is um, for some interesting hardware. Um, do you all have any suggestions on where to look for some interesting hardware? Yeah, you can, um, you can go to Anthropology. believe it or not. They don't only sell clothes. <laughs> oh, no. uh -huh. Yeah, and World, World Market, they've had some interesting, interesting pieces as well. Yeah. Um, Both of those sell. Pretty nice market. selection, too, at a really, a really cool price. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot out there just besides the metal. There's crystals. There's um, actually, um, for one of our show homes in um, Mansion in May, which is a show home in New Jersey, we did dog... Um, hardware uh, for the dog room. And we got those at Anthropology. so good suggestion. Um, so hardware can just change a piece instantly. Another thing to make old pieces look new is you bought that couch 10 years ago and paid a lot of money for that couch or a chair. And it's still in good shape because nobody sits in their living room until now we, we use rooms. That's one of our main objectives at We Feather Your Nest. We want you to use your room. So we don't want to hear you say, well, nobody sits in here, so I'm not going to do this room. Let's come up with a plan to make you use the room. So what we can do is um, upholster. There's so many beautiful fabrics out there. Uh, Michelle showed a fabric, our first uh, design series, and, um, you know, there, uh, and it was just absolutely gorgeous. There's so many beautiful textured fabrics out now that are durable. I mean, you can spill a glass of wine on these fabrics and all you have to do is take a paper towel, blot it, don't rub it, blot it, and your white couch is brand new again. And if it doesn't work. Performance fabrics are fantastic. Performance, they're even better. The umbrellas are great and all, but these performance fabrics are, uh, uh, I think one of them is called Krypton. So, you know, a Krypton, it tells you it's Superman, you know, so, um, so look into fabrics. We used to say it was too expensive, but it's really not, you know, there's so many wonderful fabrics. You can buy a very um, moderately priced fabric and your couch will look brand new, your um, chair. And if it's a little worn and you still like the style, we'll stuff the, you know, we can add some stuffing to make the uh, seats um, comfortable again. So don't. I, I redid my um, my sofa in my family room um, two years ago, and I've always loved like a white or a cream sofa. But um, my my children are a little older now. But even still, instead of spilling cookies and peanut butter and jelly, they're spilling wine. But still, <laughs> still spilling. So I actually ventured out and um, took the plunge, put a new sofa in, and I have an off white sofa, and it's beautiful. It's Krypton fabric. It, it, and there's been plenty of spills, including wine and other things, through the last two years, and it still looks great. So, love it. So, yes. Yeah, so, think about the um, classic looking sofa as well. You could, if your sofa is classic and outdated, you could always just switch up the pillows, too. You don't have Right. Perfect. Yep. That's a, perfect. And put some updated. Uh, again, we I think I talked about that on... Um, giving some feminine and masculine touches to a room without going overboard. We talked about the faux furs, um, you know, the um, different um, textured materials to update, you know, a couch. And if it's a really, you know, you just can't afford to get rid of that couch just yet, or, you know, you just, you're not ready to part with what you spent on it, cover it with so many pillows, you don't even see, see it. Um, and it'll look brand new. So um, tricks of the trade. Um, Another thing I want to just mention is behind me, you see a, um, you know, a piece of art. You could have pieces of art in your home that are old and you absolutely love. Look into reframing, guys. It, it, it is a way to go. Even just adding an acrylic frame now to a piece um, to just pop the piece of art, it will update it. 
acrylics are not that expensive. Um, you know, you, you can take it to somebody, they slip it in between the acrylic and, um, and the, maybe it has a simple um, brushed nickel or silver uh, lining, but it will make the um, piece of art become brand new. So think about uh, reframing. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that if you have existing bookshelves and you, you, you know, they're built in and they're looking dated and all, add some wallpaper to the back of it. Think about this on a white bookshelf and put it um, behind there. How neat would, how updated would that be? You know, it's um, just a really, um, you know, either way you could do it. Um, it would really be a, a simple update and you could probably even do it yourself. I think I could even venture. I usually don't try to do things myself. <laughs> they never come out too great, but I think I could even do that on a bookshelf, um, you know, because the papers, they're coming out with a lot of peel and stick papers that are like top of the line. Um, and they say if you add a little paste to it, um, it'll stay on, you know, until you need to remove it. It won't just fall off. So, um, so those are my tips for, um, for updating, um, taking something old and making it look new. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Those are great suggestions. So I hope you guys all um, appreciated, enjoyed um, our recommendations and suggestions. Um, and I'd encourage you to continue um, sending us questions because like I said before, we're going to continue the series. Um, we are also um, just a little uh, reminder, we're also doing virtual consultations now. So um, even though we're all home, um, hopefully you're in your home and if there's something that you don't really love about it, we'd be happy to help you freshen it up um, using some of the ideas we've been talking about over the past few weeks or something else. Um, so again, thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check out our YouTube channel and subscribe because we will be posting new videos um, in the upcoming weeks and answering more questions. Um, so remember, it's time to renew, refresh, refeather your nest. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 Stay safe.